Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at scopes inside a lot of all. Now, scopes are a way for us to refactor our Laravel model queries, make them reusable and also a lot more expressive and descriptive. So let's go ahead and see how they work in practice. So for a use case, we actually have a really good use case for it on our application. If you guys check out our feed and dashboard controller, we have this three lines of code that are duplicated on both of these controllers, basically our search functionality. If you guys take a look, they are exactly identical. I think we just copied it, uh, copied the feed controller logic directly from the dashboard page. So that's why they are duplicated. And if you take a closer look, the part we are actually going to refactor is this where statement, right? This where query. So it's exactly identical on both of these pages. And if we happen or if you want to use this exact sa same search functionality on a different controller, again, we will have to go ahead and copy this and paste it over. It's also a bit hard to tell what is going on. It's quite long. So this is where scopes come into play. They make the code a lot more readable and also reusable. So let's go ahead and actually refactor this into a scope. All right, so scopes are actually defined inside our Laravel models. So since I want to perform this query on our idea model, I will go ahead and open up our idea model and put the scope inside of it. So, and you can put the scope anywhere you like. In this case, I will put it at the bottom of my model. Now, in simple terms, scopes are just a method that apply some sort of query on your existing set of queries, okay? So for example, uh, here I already have this order by and I wanna perform a search. The scope will go ahead and actually perform or add this where on top of our existing set of or chain of queries. So let's go ahead and see how it works. You need to basically define a method or a function on your model. Now the name of the method needs to be in the following format. It needs to always start with scope. So it needs to have the scope prefix. And then after that, whatever you want your scope name to be, okay? So in this case, because we are performing a search kind of query, I'm just gonna name it search. So it's gonna be scope search. So this scope is always going to be there. It's like the prefix. After that, you can put whatever you like. Now, this method also has one uh, argument that you always need to pass in, and it's an argument of name query. Now, if you'd like to type hint it, you can. So it's a type of builder. And this is going to be, let's import it, of Illuminate Database Eloquent Builder. So if you guys would like to type hint it, this is the namespace for it, okay? And in terms of return type, it basically doesn't have a return type. It's just type of void. Now, since I believe most, our, most of our viewers are not familiar with type hints, I'm not going to be adding them so far. But if, if you prefer it, you can definitely go ahead and type hint it as well. Okay, so now basically now that we have defined the scope, we can just go ahead and copy our query here and move it inside the scope. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And now we can come here and actually move the code inside here. Now, in order for the query to actually apply, we have to go ahead and actually use this query argument. Okay, a lot of would automatically inject this whenever we use our query. So I'll just need to go ahead and use this query variable and say query there. And this will basically give us access to all the methods we have on our model as well, right? So if you want to use order by, we can use order by here. You can use where in anything basically we have used so far, we can call on this query as well, okay? So now we have moved our search functionality inside the scope. There is, however, one issue. Uh, we don't really have access to this request inside the scope itself. And we might be actually using this outside the regular HTTP request cycle, right? So we might not even have the request. So we need to go ahead and replace this with some sort of argument. I'll just say search, okay? Obviously, search does not exist. So I will add it to my uh, scope method. So just we can say search, right? And by default, I will give it a default value of an empty string in case we decide not to pass it in. But that's pretty much it. So now that we have defined our scope, let's go ahead and actually see how we can use it on our controllers or anywhere else. So it's actually very easy. All we have to do is we just need to put the name of the scope and use it as a method. Okay, so here I just put in search and that's it. I have already used my scope okay now 
if you remember, our method name is scope search, but when we are using it, we just type in search itself, right? As you guys can see. So that's actually how you use your scope. So the name here is a little bit different from the name you have defined on your model itself. Now, if you are accepting any additional arguments on top of query, you can also go ahead and then pass them over here. So in this case, we can say uh, request search, and then obviously default, I just set it to an empty string. And that's all we have to do, guys. So we have now refactored our code that we initially had. So let me open up our feed controller. We have refactored from this into this. And this is obviously a lot more readable. You immediately know, hey, go ahead and get all the ideas and search for them using our, you know, uh, the search uh, parameter passed in, right? So we get it from the request. And that's it. Let me also add the semicolon. And that's the process, guys. So basically, this will go ahead and apply this where statement on our ideas variable. It's as if we basically copied it and, you know, pasted it here, right? So that's the process. So this code is identical to what we have over here. And we can actually go ahead and test it out, make sure it works. So I'll open up our uh, dashboard page. Let's search for, let's say, yellow code. I'll type it in. And as you guys can see, it is indeed working. Let me search for me. And yeah, the code still works as expected, but it's a lot shorter and it's a lot uh, easier to read and also it's reusable. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and actually basically copy this and paste it on our feed controller as well, just like so. And as you guys can see, we have gone ahead and refactored our code using scopes. It's just that simple. Now, what we have done here is known as a local scope. And it's basically a scope that you use on a single model. A lot of it also has support for something known as a global scope. It's basically a scope you can define on multiple models or across multiple models of different type. For example, if I wanted this search scope to be available both on our idea model, as well as let's say the comment model, you, would, you can go ahead and use a global scope. That's a little bit outside kind of the content of this video. I might make a separate video about it, but if you are interested in that, just search global scope uh, Laudable and you should be able to find it. Okay, so that's it for scopes in Laudable. I would like to show you guys something extra as well regarding Laudable. And that is usually when you have cases like we have inside our dashboard controller where you have a if statement and then inside that if statement, you want to conditionally apply some sort of query. Laudable actually makes it a bit easier to perform this or gives us a way to make the code a little bit shorter. And the way you can do that is actually something like this. So I could go ahead and say ideas dot when, and this when is as if we basically are performing an if statement. So the first argument is going to be our condition. So I'll just copy it from what we have over here. And as a second argument, you can go ahead and pass it in a closure. So let me go ahead and pass in a closure or an anonymous function. And we can now go ahead and put our basically what we want to perform inside this closure. And of course, this closure is kind of similar to scopes. It does have a query variable and it is also of type builder if you guys want to type hinted. So we can now go ahead and put this over here and similar to our scope that we had, let me open up our model where we used the query variable to perform the query or access the ver method. Here is also the same thing. So I need to get rid of all these ideas and instead use this argument here. So I can just go ahead and use query, search, and perform our search, right? And that's pretty much it. So this code is identical to this code over here. Let me just paste it here so we can see it on side by side. So this is identical to this code over here. Now, depending on what you prefer, you can maybe use this one, or if you like, you can also perform it this way as well. Now, one benefit to this code is we are still actually calling methods on our ideas. So if I want, I can actually continue chain calling additional methods as well. For example, what I could have done is I could go come over here, directly access our idea class like so. So I could have said ideas equals to idea, then, and then gone ahead and chain called order by, right? So this is actually something we could have done. And that basically removes the need for us to have this initial line. 
it also means we don't need the if statement anymore. And as you can see, the code looks a lot shorter. So this is identical to what we have on our feed controller, right? Where we initially define the ideas, then we have our if statements, we do some conditional inside of it. So this, these two are basically the exact same thing. As a matter of fact, I could even move this paginate up here. Okay, so that's it. This is one additional way of refactoring your code if you need it. Now, it can be a little bit complicated when you initially read the code. So if you guys do not like the syntax, you definitely can go ahead and still use the if statement. The only reason I like this event is because it allows me to continue chain calling additional methods and queries. And if I want, I can even have multiple events as well. So again, it's up to you guys. You are not forced to use it. It's just a tool in your toolbox that you can use whenever uh, you need it. I thought it would be useful for, to you guys as well to cover it because it is somewhat similar to how scopes work. So that's it guys for today's video. Let's go ahead and test this out before we leave to make sure it still works. Again, I'll do a search. As you guys can see, it is indeed working. Let's search for high. I don't know if I have a tweet with that. Yeah, we do. We have high there. Let's do one with test. And as you can see, our search functionality is indeed working. Let me go to a different page, page three, page two. What do we have here? Let's search for this one. And as you can see, guys, our search functionality is still working and we refactored the code and made it, made it a lot uh, shorter. So that's it, guys, for today's episode. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. As always, make sure you like the video and subscribe. It's the best way to support the channel. And YouTube really likes it when people like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.